These backgrounds are all AI generated backgrounds into Photoshop with just one click. This new feature in Photoshop really eliminates the need to buy props and it could come so, so handy in product photography. So I'm going to show you how to use this and also all the other features you can do with this tool. So first of all, in order to get this tool, you have to go into your Adobe cloud, go to the beta apps and download the Photoshop beta. Right now, this feature, it's only available into beta. So I would recommend you download this and play with it and learn how it works before it gets released. Now let's go back to our image and I am going to show you how this works. First of all, I have to, I want to select my subject. This is a product photography shoot I did a few weeks ago. I had a video on it. You guys probably already watched it. And for that, I will just click on my uh, uh, quick selection tool and then this dialog appears. If you do not see this dialog, go into your windows and make sure the contextual taskbar is clicked on. Now you will see as you're generating new backgrounds, this um, bar will move around. So in order to just pin it into a position, you go to these three dots and pin bar position. And now it will stay in the same place. So with any selection tool uh, selected, click on select subject and Photoshop will select the subject. It didn't do a great job, but then with the quick selection tool selected, I will just add to the selection. I'll add that part, hold down shift. And I want to add this prop that was over here. And I want to remove part this part of the background. So hold down option while you click on here. And there you go. Now we selected the product and this one prop. Now what I want to do is generate a new background. In order to do that, first I have to inverse my selection. And we have a shortcut here into this bar. You see, you have like refine mask. You can have the invert selection, transformation selection, mask from selection, adjustment layers, and so on. We need this one that says invert selection. So now that my background is selected, click on generative fill over here, and you have to give it the prompt kind of like at mid journey. For this one, I'm just going to say 3D uh, geometric pattern. You can be as detailed or as general as you want in your prompt and then click generate or click OK on your keyboard. And now this is sending it to the web and it's coming up with three variation of backgrounds that I can choose from. So uh, this is real time. It takes a few seconds, but there you go. Now we have three variations over here. This is the first one. This is the second one. And this is the third one. Not bad. This one, it's not good at all, but let's click generate again. See if we can get something better. There we have three new versions. This is one, this is the other, and this is the third one. Not bad, but I think we can do better. I am going to click generate one more time. We have three new versions. One, two, this one is pretty cool. And three. So I kind of like the second one. This one is pretty nice. Well, anyway, this is the way you generate backgrounds. I'm going to go back to a version here where I created a whole bunch of them. So you don't have to sit here and wait for me. So as you can see, I created many, many versions of backgrounds. Some of them are really cool. Some of them are so, so, but, um, this is how I created these backgrounds and I'm going to show you how you can fix some things into the backgrounds if you don't like, and also some other, uh, uses of this tool. For example, this background over here is pretty cool, but I do not like this bright part over here. Well, I can take my lasso tool and just basically draw around it because I want to erase this. So I'll just go to generative fill and this time I am going to give it no prompts at all. I'm just going to click on generate and they will just do, this is kind of like a content aware fill. So it should fix that part and fill it with whatever matches with the surroundings. There you go. Now let's see this edge over here doesn't look so good. Let's see if I can fix this. I'm just going to make a selection, generate fill, and I'm going to say generate with no prompts at all. Now, another very useful uh, way to use this tool is in wildlife photography. And I have this little bird image over here. It's kind of a boring image. It's a raw image straight from my camera. And this gray background this is just my garage door. So it's not looking so great. But then I did add a generative fill to create a new background and I came up with this one. If you're wondering what kind of prompt I gave it, the only prompt I gave it is just says forest. 
and it created this image. I had to do a little bit of adjustment and just brighten the bird a little bit, but this is the background it created and now the image looks much, much better. Let me show you some other things you can do. This is a portrait, obviously it's done in a studio. This is just a stock image. Let's say we want this lady to wear a sweater. Well, how do we do that? First, I am just going to get the quick selection tool and I'm going to make a really quick selection. I'm not going to select her hands, just her arms. And I'm just gonna go about this much, maybe get her belly too. There you go. So we selected her arms and torso and then we'll just go to generative fill and I'm just going to say a gray sweater and create generate. Let's see how it does. So this is one version of the sweater it gave me. Not bad. This is the second version. And this is the third version. It's still thinking, my computer is a little bit slow. And there you go. This one has some funny business going out around the arms here. Let's change this to a pink sweater. Let's see what we get. Maybe we can get a better one. Pink sweater. And just like that, our lady is wearing a pink sweater. And just like before, we have three options here. One, two, and three. And uh, we have some funny business in here. Let's see if we take our lasso tool. And let me just pick this edge, see if this could be fixed. I'm just gonna say generate the fill and generate without giving it a prompt. See if we can smoothen up that area a little bit. And there you go. Now this part, it's a lot smoother. And let's say we just want to select the subject and then inverse it and put the lady in a completely different place. So I'm going to invert it by clicking on this button and I'm just going to say city streets. See how this looks. And here is our three options. We have one, we have two, and we have three. This is not bad at all. Look at the colors. It matched the colors. Everything is looking flawless. This will make the composite so much easier. Let's click generate again because I see some funny business going around the arm. See if we can get a little bit better. And there you go. This is a much better uh, result. That was option number one. This is option number two. We have some funny business going around the hair. And option number three. Not bad at all. Let me show you a different example with some other things you can do. We have this image over here. And let's say we want to remove this haystack. We can just make a selection and then click on generate, generate the fill and without a prompt, just create, click on generate. And this is how we remove things from our image and Photoshop should do a really, really good job for this. Now you don't have to use this just to remove stuff. You can add stuff as well. I'm gonna leave the haystack in there. Just gonna make a small patch selection and generate the fill, I'm gonna put on dog. And just like that, we have a dog into the field. Not bad at all, perfectly blended in. This one looks really, really great. I am happy with my result. The most I'm uh, impressed with this is for product photography, creating new backgrounds. It's really, really handy. And, uh, you know, just for wildlife too. I mean, this image is completely transformed from this to this. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.